This is the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, one of Africa's biggest infrastructure projects. $4.7 billion. Giant hydroelectric dam. A monster of concrete and steel. The government believes it's going to revive the economy. But Egypt worries this might come at its own expense. Negotiations over the dam's operations have dragged on for years. With neighboring Sudan caught in the feud, and both Egypt and Ethiopia hinting at possible military action over the project, attempts to reach a final comprehensive deal have ended in deadlock, with many key questions still open. So why is it so hard to settle the dispute over the Nile? Let us unpack that for you. The importance of the world's longest river, the Nile, can hardly be overstated. It's essential for the 280 million people living along its banks in the Nile Basin. It runs through 11 countries. But Ethiopia's plans on the Nile are being watched especially closely in Egypt and Sudan. And to understand why, let's take a look at how the river flows. The Nile's main source is in Ethiopia at Lake Tana. Water flows towards Sudan and joins the river's other tributary at Sudan's capital, Khartoum, before heading downstream to Egypt. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, or GERT for short, is being built here, on the border with Sudan, near the Nile source. The dam would catch water in its massive reservoir, whose surface area is larger than that of Greater London. The water is then harnessed to generate electricity. Simply put, the new dam gives Ethiopia considerable control over how much water flows downstream. And the stakes are immensely high for all parties involved. Ethiopia wants the dam to supercharge its economy as the country's population and ambitions grow. It could be part of Ethiopia's transformation. If it does provide sufficient power um, for all sorts of future investment, particularly in manufacturing, which is an area that Ethiopia has been trying to move into increasingly, you know, presenting itself as a site for labor-intensive manufacturing, because ultimately, you know, Ethiopia has, has very cheap labor, also has quite cheap power. It could have a huge impact on everyday Ethiopians' prospects. Roughly 65% of the country is not connected to the power grid, something the government wants to change. If things go as planned, energy from the dam could also more than double Ethiopia's current output, fulfilling its needs and making it an exporter. Meanwhile, Cairo says the dam can operate under one condition that Egypt is not harmed. The country is home to almost 100 million people who depend on the Nile for 90% of their fresh water supply. One fear is that Ethiopia will leave too much water in its reservoirs during periods of drought, endangering the flow downstream. That could leave Egypt's farmers unable to irrigate their lands, causing major food losses. And all this as the effects of a warming climate have already strained Egyptian agriculture. Any 2% drop of water affects 1 million people. So it's really the more impoverished categories and the farmers, I think, that will be affected. And where does all of this leave Sudan? It's caught quite literally in the middle of things. Sudan is the first time to take care of the land. Sometimes you're in a situation where there are issues that are related to the land. The effects for Sudan seem mixed. One fear is that GERD could jeopardize the operations of Sudan's own dams on the Nile. However, Sudan also sees an opportunity to get cheap energy from Ethiopia thanks to GERD, and it could regulate water flows that have sometimes caused flooding. And beyond economic interests, negotiations around the dam have also been marred by distrust. In 2013, 
a meeting broadcast live between then Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi and political advisors showed one of them suggesting fomenting internal conflict to distract Ethiopia from building the dam. يبقى في تدخل في الشأن الداخلي ويبقى في تأثير على القرار وعلى الاختيارات في إثيوبيا المجتمع هناك مجترئ إلى أقصى درجة وإحنا شوفنا ده في زيارتنا كانت حاجة يعني مؤسفة. Recently, Ethiopia accused Egypt of sponsoring cyber attacks to disrupt the project, and Ethiopia has repeatedly threatened to unilaterally start filling the dam's reservoir with or without an agreement with Egypt and Sudan. The dispute over the Nile is also complicated by issues with deeper roots, like history and culture. The dam has reignited an age-old debate about who exactly owns the Nile. So it's the, it's the Nile's um, vital role in, in Egypt's civilization and history, which continues until this day, which makes this such a seismic issue. Ancient Egyptians revered it and called it a gift of the gods. And this view of the Nile still resonates today. Today, the Nile occupies a prominent place in Egyptian contemporary culture, sometimes featuring in songs for kids. But of course, Egyptians aren't alone there. Ethiopians call the Nile's main tributary Abai, and Ethiopian culture also has an enduring attachment to it. And Ethiopia also sees this project as overcoming um, what it perceives as historic injustice um, relating to um, not being able to use the Nile waters for its development um, because of historic treaties and other uh, claims of Egyptian hegemony. Let's rewind back to 1929. Britain was then a colonial power in Africa and signed a treaty with Egypt granting Cairo the right to veto projects higher up the Nile that would affect its water share. Nineteen fifty nine brought another key agreement, this time between Egypt and Sudan. It gave Egypt the right to fifty five billion cubic meters of Nile water a year, and Sudan eighteen point five billion cubic meters per year. Ethiopia was not consulted. And in nineteen seventy, Egypt finished building its own massive dam, which helped control flooding and utilize the Nile to boost its economy. The feeling of historical injustice on the side of Ethiopia and historical attachment on the side of Egypt have made any talks on sharing the Nile harder. Therefore, it's you know, not looking to make compromises and concessions on this project, and instead it's looking for the downstream countries to do so. Egypt, on the other hand, um, sees that you know, the, the Nile is a vital source of water for Egypt, and it has concerns about this project and the way Ethiopia has, has gone about it. Even with a final deal on the dam, talks and further cooperation will be necessary in the years ahead. There are more projects slated for the future along the Nile, raising further questions about the division of resources and the effects of climate change and growing populations mean water could be an increasingly scarce resource. What needs to happen here is that, you know, despite this very torturous process and the disappointment and disillusion of the parties for various reasons, the only option here is to return to the negotiating table. And it's very important for Sudan and Egypt that they are working with Ethiopia, that they can trust Ethiopia, that Ethiopia will look after their interests as these quite vulnerable downstream countries. Thank you so much for watching this edition of Unpacked. What we're trying to do with this series is break down complicated stories that shape our world. And we'd love to hear from you for more ideas.
So if there's a particular topic you'd like us to dive into, let us know in the comment section. And maybe it'll be the topic of our next video.